So you see the picture on the screen. When I grew up, my father was a carpenter. And you know what he used to tell me? He said, you can't sleep with a hammer under your cushion and think the next day you're going to be a carpenter. All right? In the same way, <laughs> you can think you're going to prepare for your final exams by putting your textbooks under your cushion and thinking, well, somehow it's going to magically get to my mind. And because that's what a lot of you think the strategy is. And I'm here this morning to help you nullify those fake beliefs and get down to what is the most important things that you can do to absolutely hack your final exams. You don't have a lot of time left, but I promise you, the things that I will be sharing with you today will put you in a new bracket of success leading up to the final exams if you keep to it. Some of it is based on basic understandings and principles that you might not have heard before. And others are going to be, especially at the end of this session, practical things on how to successfully complete your final exams. I'm going to start you off with a lesson that I myself learned when I was at high school. Our one lecturer walked into the room and he said exactly the following. This tennis ball, if I keep it in my hand and I drop it, what's going to happen? All right, look at what happens. All right, does it come back to my hand? No, my hand is slacking. My hand doesn't have the understanding that if I, I have to put in effort for this ball to come back. If I take the same hand, I give it new understanding, I put in effort, it actually returns to my hand. The more effort I put in it, the further the result would be. And the fact of the matter is where you are this morning, listen to me carefully, you are in exactly the same spot. You have all the potential. The decision you make this morning on how to respond to this possibility of great potential is up to you. If you are going to slack, this ball is going to end up on the floor. With even a little bit of effort, it's going to just return to your hand. With great effort, focus, and the correct techniques, you are going to make a massive success out of this. So there's actually a verse that talks about this exact thing in Proverbs. It says, you as a slack hand becomes poor, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. In other words, the person that understands that if I go through life with a slack hand, it's going to just end up into me being poor. Not only in monetary terms, but just a poor life. But the one that realizes this hand, the potential, and actually is diligent, that results in being rich. The second part, the next verse reads, He who gathers in summer is a wise son. He who sleeps in harvest is a son who causes shame. What is, what's that son realizing? Help me out. That son is realizing in the summer I should be gathering. They are realizing the time that they are in. They are aware of the season that they are in. The matric in this time, who gathers, who works, is actually wise. They are the wise sons because they are realizing the season that they are in. The one who sleeps now, at the end of the harvest, they are going to be in shame. That is really the two principles of what I am going to share today with you. It is the potential that you have, the action that that results in, and the realization of the season that you are in. I'm going to ask you two things. When you were in primary school, you all did an IQ test. I don't know if you remember it, but you've done it. There's a record of your intelligent cohesion. All right. It's basically a test that says how bright you are. And you hear that a lot. Some of you might have heard you really did bad in the IQ test. Okay. I'm here to tell you, that is not what matters. Studies have shown that the importance of emotional intelligence, EQ, is what leads to success. You can have a very poor intellect in terms of others maybe. But if you have emotional intelligence, it actually results in success. And I'm going to quickly explain to you what is 
emotional intelligence. And how, why that is really important. You're going to be able to identify with some of the, these. So EQ is the ability to stay motivated and cope with stressful situations. EQ is a matric that sits here and realizes, or maybe you've experienced some stress in the last week, month. I know some of you have because I've spoken to some of you. But in the midst of that, they have the ability to stay motivated. Can you understand that? If you're pressured now and you say, oh, I've gi I'm giving up, you're not emotionally intelligent. But if you realize in the midst of this stress, I actually need to be motivated. I need to take action. It actually reflects someone who is more emotionally intelligent. I think that for you is important to ask, where am I at at the moment? Am I actually motivated for the rest of this year? EQ is a better predictor of success. If you have emotional intelligence that's high, your likelihood of having a successful career one day is much better than the IQ. And they've never tested that for most of you. EQ is equal to your performance comes down to having a growth mindset. That's the basics of it. If, you're, if you have a growth mindset, it's the reflection of a high EQ. So a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. Which one are you this morning? So a fixed mindset is someone who's going to avoid challenges. If there's a challenge before them, they're the last one to put up their hand. If there's a difficult thing before them, oh man, they just can't get themselves motivated. Where someone with a growth mindset is going to say, wow, I can actually now develop myself. And so they will embrace that challenge. They realize that the challenge, if I successfully completed it, it results in me growing. Are you embracing challenges? Give up easily. Let's take an example. You get home, you had maths, homework, you sit down with that problem, and boy, you look at it. You, I know with the EGD they do that. They just draw the first construction lines, and tomorrow I hear I've tried, sir. Okay? But they've given up. They have actually haven't faced the problem. Or are you someone who's persistent and you face those difficulties and not give up? A fixed mindset is someone who thinks hard work is useless. Why does it help me now to work hard? There's no job opportunity. I can't go study. I don't have the opportunities that my friends have. And so they, why would they put in any effort? There's no fruit, it's fruitless. Why does it really help to have a matric certificate? Our certificates are whatever. That's going to be a fixed mindset. A growth mindset says no. I realize that if I put in effort now, I am in myself producing mastery. I can be the best EGD kid in this province. I can be the best have the best metric results in this district. That can set me up to study further or just in yourself, do the absolute best that you can. That is when you have a growth mindset. Someone with a fixed mindset is going to say, well, um, the teacher again said, hey, I have to redo that drawing. And you see it as criticism and it demotivates you. Someone else with a growth mindset will say, well, I can actually learn from this. You know, if the teacher teaches me this drawing needs to be done differently, it's not criticism. They're actually directing me. So I'm going through this list, but there's a plenty of other indicators. But the importance is for you to identify which one, one am I this morning. Am I fixed? Do I identify with the left hand or do I identify with the right hand? Because a growth mindset sets you up for success and is the indicator of being emotionally intelligent. Okay, let's look at the growth mindset. Acquire knowledge rather than prepare for exams. That's where you are now at the moment. If you're focusing on things, I just have to dump everything the night before to get tomorrow's paper, the mindset is completely warped. You aren't going to learn anything. You're not acquiring anything. And you're going to have stress when you enter those exams. I will guarantee it. But if you now realize this, and the journey from now till when I write my final paper is for me to actually really comp get, gain competence, acquire knowledge, you are going to be much better prepared for that final exam. Someone with a growth mindset focuses on the learning part now rather than the cramming. It's what I've just said. Understanding that learning is more important than cramming. 
They avoid shortcuts. So in other words, the writing off of homework quickly before I get to class today, because I chose other things during that same time where my friend did, the, my friend actually has the growth mindset because they did the homework. But I'll rather quickly take a shortcut, write it down, the teacher won't know. But you are actually for yourself limiting your potential. It's a taking gun and shooting yourself in the foot. It's a shortcut and it's not an indicator of someone with a growth mindset. Someone with a growth mindset realizes that struggling is good. If you, I guarantee all of you, if you think back to your last maths problem that you had to solve at home, if you gave up on it, you probably left that homework session feeling a little bit demotivated. But if you said, well, let me find other help. Let me re-look at the examples in the book. Let me look at other exercises. Phone a friend. Watch a YouTube video that teaches you that same solution. And you get a win. You walk out of that session motivated. And it's those small wins that's going to be key for you. Some of you have a schooling career of it. And you are confident. You know I'm speaking to you because you've seen this growth mindset in yourself already. Others maybe hear this for the first time. But it's still not too late to make that switch. Your friend that complains all the time, fixed mindset. Your friend that never complains, growth mindset. As easy as that. Where are you at? Change it if you are the one that's complaining. What happens to the growth mindset? You are constantly acquiring knowledge. You're constantly learning. Your brain is like a muscle. The more exercise it gets, the fitter it gets, the better it works under pressure. You need, you still have enough time to wake up your brain. I promise you, your brain will not make it through finals if you haven't prepared it for finals. Do not take a shortcut. You need to prepare and train your brain now already. You have to now realize this is the start of my training schedule today for me to be ready for finals. Please hear me. Which one of these levers would you use to move that rock? A or B? Who's, who says A? One. Who says B? B is the right one. Why? Because it has a bigger mechanical advantage. You can go try this at home. Pressing down on A, a lot of effort. You'll probably have to get a friend on that end to help you lift that rock. But if, it, if you're using B, that lever, the length of that lever, gives you the advantage, the mechanical advantage to move that rock like that. Now where you are this morning, you have to ask yourself, what gives me the best possible advantage? What are those levers? In front of you, you have, comp each one differs in what levers you have in front of you. Some of you, have the lever of organizing a social evening. Some of you are on the lever of 40 days. Some of you are on the lever of pre finishing your pet. Each one of you have got different opportunities in front of you. Which of those levers, pulling them, will result in being the most successful in the final exams? Let me give you some examples. The quality of your pet toss is the number one lever that you can pull. Honestly, there's nothing more important than your pet toss currently. Can I tell you why? The way your school-based assessment is structured, okay? The entire year's work is going to be 25%. All the exams you've written, all the class tests, all of that is 25%. Then your pet task is another 25%. And your final exam is 50%. So if you have a pet task, that pet task is 25% of your final mark. It, it is a tremendous responsibility to make sure you absolutely nail that pet. The prelim exams is your second lever that I think you should really make sure you're well prepared for. Why? It goes into that first bucket. Why is it so important? Do you know why it's so important? Because it covers the exact same work that you'll be writing in your finals. If you walk out of your prelim successfully, 
you start your finals with confidence, absolute confidence, because you've already gone through all your work in the last few weeks. You know exactly the feedback that you're going to get will give you exact indicators on what to focus on going into the finals, what to spend time on, what to revise and what to not. People, your prelim exams is critical for yourself, for feedback for yourself, and it's the training of that muscle, it's preparing well. That's your second thing to focus on. Being present in class, I cannot underline this more. Of your entire schooling career, the last few weeks is going to be critical. Because your teachers are doing what? They are focusing, they know it's your last weeks in class. So they are going to, once you finish your work, what are they going to do? They're going to be revising with you. They're going to be highlighting certain elements that they know is important in preparing you for the finals. You can't stay at home. You can't miss a day of school. You need to be in class. And why I'm saying being present in class? Because you can still be in class and thinking about other things. You have to look at your emotional and spiritual health. You have to. If you are at a place where, it, where you're emotionally depleted or spiritually depleted, I want to urge you. Find someone who can sit with you. Drink that coffee. I'm not saying get the friend in class. That's not the right person. Get an adult that's gone through this. A teacher. A, a mentor. Let someone pray with you. Let someone sit with you, guide you, help you. You have to reach out. This is a time for you not to hold back. If you feeling, listen, I'm just at a place where I don't have any hope for this exam. Reach out to someone. Sit with someone. Okay. And take time to sit with the Lord. He wants to meet each one of you. You know, our prayer over all these years in this school has been, Lord, let every matric before they leave the school, meet you. That has never changed, regardless of where you are at the moment. Maybe you've gone through GRA now for five years and you've never met the Lord. But I want to invite you. There's still time left. And our prayer hasn't changed for each one of you. We desire for the Lord to personally meet you. Not to be second hand in what you've heard or said or uh, because they said. No, He can meet you in your room. On the beach, turn to him. He can change your mindset from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset. He's able to do much more than we can think of imagine. And I want to just underline that today. The last thing before we get into a few bonus tips. The last thing is for you to plan your days. If I have to ask you to put up your hand, how many of you in front of your, in your room, you've got a dedicated area that's your place to study, you've got enough lighting, you've got all the things that you need. In front of you, there's an empty wall because if that wall has photos and pictures and uh, slogans, that, you end up looking at that and knowing all of that by heart and not looking down onto your books. So a clean wall, and on that wall there's a calendar from today Till your last day you can take a calendar any calendar and your final exams if you haven't checked we've sent it out to you your final you can do your prelims and your finals you set that out first so you have a blank calendar you set it out you populate it with your that's not the uh, exact ones that's just an example you take your schedules and you populate your subjects you don't populate your friends subjects you don't put the, the the timetable up on your wall just as it is because it's got subjects in that's not yours it's going to confuse you it's going to add pressure because you're seeing a lot of stuff no you simplify it and you start populating it you know your ability if you know you need to spend a lot of time when you're going to write maths for instance but before maths you're writing two or three other difficult subjects you have to already now add in maths in preparing. You can't just do maths a day before. But this schedule will help you to pace yourself. And the best thing for me when I got home every day is I took a red marker and I made a cross. Cha, that day is done. Let's look at some bonus tips. And these things I've researched. This isn't me thinking it out, right? These things actually help. So they're saying statistically... If you go for a 20-minute walk before 
you enter your exam room, you can add 4 to 5% onto your grade right there. Just by doing a 20 minute walk. What do you normally do? You come with your books to school before the time. Right now you're standing. There's another hour before you're writing. Now your friends are asking you questions. And shucks, I don't know the answer. What happens? Anxiety comes over you. Fear comes over you. Why did I miss that? If I miss that, what else did I miss? And you are flabbergasted. I'm asking you now. Commit to each other that you will not, before you enter the room, ask another friend anything about the subject that you are writing. Commit to honoring the guy that's also prepared for the paper, not to bring that anxiety. Commit to taking a walk together, rather, and talking about other things. It's the best thing that you can do before writing exam. I promise you that. When you are studying, strategies differ. Some of you will just sit and read through the work. If you read that work out loud, that same work that you're reading out quietly, if you read it out loud, you again have another 4 to 5% added on retention onto that work. That you, you're spending the same amount of time, you're reading the same work, but by verbally letting it come out of your mouth, possibility of you remembering it just jumps to the next level. So speak out loud instead of reading quietly. Teach what you have learned. And this has worked for me many times. If you can, have a friend that you sit with and you together do uh, problem solving of maths or science uh, equations or whatever. And then you teach each other those um, solutions. That actually helps you to gain confidence. In your preparation, create almost your own exams. So, try and get an exam paper. Does it help to have that past exam paper with a memo on your desk at the same time from the beginning? No. Take that memo, put it in the drawer. And create within you an exam environment. Set time for you. I only have three hours to do this paper. And you sit and you are just as focused and you are working out those equations or the problems. ecexams.co.za you can probably get for each and every subject past exam papers. If you haven't gone to that site yet, make sure you do. You can download your papers and work from there. Get into a fixed sleeping routine. routine. Make sure you spend enough time resting. Okay? I can't tell you how important it is when you get home to give your phone to your parents. Or put your phone on the fridge and have no distractions while working. And the same for when you're going to bed at night. Even if you are sleeping and your phone is in the room and there's a message coming through, ping, or a vibration, it distracts from your sleep. You might not wake up fully, but it steals from the depth of your sleeping. Exercise daily. At least you get the 20-minute walk before you write the exams. Uh, that's also helpful. Eat healthy, limit distractions, and it can be something simple like closing your uh, curtains. If you're constantly looking, you know what's the things that, that are limiting yourself. Okay, So limit those distractions. And so, who are you this morning? Are you going to let this ball drop? Are you going to just let it drop and not consider the consequences of it? Or are you actually deciding, I'm going to have no slack hands, and I'm going to understand the time that I'm in, the season that I'm in, and I'm actually going to put in the effort, because I want a return on 12 years' work, people. It's not a year's work. It's 12 years. 12 years of your life. It's the final stretch. How do you finish this race? Have you given up? Then I'm here to champion and say, come on. It's only the last final stretch. Come on. Even if you are tired, even if you are at the back of this race, it's not the time now to slack. It's not the time now to give up. Please, help yourself by making wise decisions. Changing your mindset to having a growth mindset. That will, in the end, help you to reach your potential.